We've taken six of the world's top athletes to find out what it takes to make a true Olympian. Come on, Oregon, come on. Testing, analyzing, come on. going behind the stats of an elite athlete as we push their bodies to the max. The physical demands of Rugby Sevens are absolutely enormous. Uh, it's an incredibly fast game, played at an incredible pace. They are the complete package. They are strong, they are lean, and they are powerful across the entire body. Tom Mitchell is Team GB's captain and one of Rugby Seven's leading point scorers. He led his country to a stunning silver medal at the Olympic Games Rio 2016. In Seven's first appearance at the Games, and his explosive combination of agility, speed, and strength make Tom one of his sport's true superstars. Growing up, being a lover of sport as a kid, you watch the Olympics realizing that's the pinnacle of sport. We brought Tom to our cutting edge sports lab to face one of his toughest physical challenges so far. As a sevens player, his anatomy has to excel in almost every measurable area. The games are fast and brutal. Two seven to 10 minute halves of quick passing, full impact, hard charging action. He may be near the pinnacle of his sport, but if Tom has any weakness, we'll find it. So just how close to peak performance is he? The type of, of muscle groups really for rugby sevens is almost entirely global. They require speed for sprinting. In addition, they're doing a lot of tackling. Big biceps, triceps, shoulders, pecs. And to bring those together, you have to be incredibly strong throughout the core. Before we really put Tom's physiology to the test, we need to see the anatomy that lies beneath the surface. The DEXA scan will give us the data we need to see how much of Team GB's captain is power producing muscle. When we look at the body composition of an average American footballer, they have a fat percentage of 15.3. A Premier League footballer is 12.5, but Tom is leaner than them both at 12.3%. The interesting thing that we see in Tom is that he is very lean. There's a lot of muscle mass with very little fat mass. Only 12.3% of his total body mass is made up of fat. And that's very, very low, particularly for someone who is carrying 85 kilos at 177 centimeters. You have to live a different life. You have to stay in when you might want to go out. You can't just have a lazy takeaway. You need to make yourself proper food all the time. And for some people, that's not the life they want to live. But the rewards are great. We get to represent our country on the biggest stage. The dynamometer test is a measure of strength, and it's also a measure of strength endurance. So what we should see here is Tom with very high strength, why is that important? Because strength underpins power, power underpins speed. Of course, what we have to factor in here is that, that Tom is carrying an injury. So I think here we'll actually see that unmasked. The dyno will really put Tom's key muscle groups of hamstrings and quadriceps to the test. These are the drivers for everything he does on the rugby field, running, kicking, and tackling. So what I'm going to get you to do when I say go is to bring your foot back behind your um, knee and then extend out as hard as you can to push against the um, resistance. Three, two, one, let's go. And push, 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 pull, 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 push, 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 pull, 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 push, 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 last one, pull, 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 and relax, and relax, and relax. Tom's training involves continual work on his quads and hamstrings, the power behind his every move during a game. The unrelenting pace that Sevens is played at, combined with the kind of impact most of us would only feel in a car crash, means a powerful leg musculature is essential in the modern player. But after the biggest tournament of his life, is Tom still firing on all cylinders? Push, 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 pull, 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 push, 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 pull, 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 and relax, well done, good stuff, excellent stuff. Tom's results show some impressive power output figures. His right leg quads generating 106 newton meters, but his left leg producing a huge 134. These results tell us that he is strong, and, and you can see that 
just by looking at him. He's an incredible physique. He's very strong in the quadricep and he's very strong in the hamstring. So that ratio is very, very good. Playing rugby, that's a huge demand on your body. We joke often in training that we're going to be in a pretty bad way when we're old men, but the reality is it does take a toll on your body. You spend the weekends lying around because you're sore and you're icing because you have to if you want to try and get out on the training field the next week. So, you know, there are things that, that do really affect your life. Rugby sevens is an invasion game. It's the ability of a player to take the ball and break through a defence in order to score a try. Speed is of the essence. And so what we're expecting to see here is that Tom should be carrying very high speed, which is all part of this package of performance. In the sprint test, Tom will use many of the same muscles as the dyno, but instead of torque, it's raw speed that we're measuring. Rugby Sevens has some of the fastest men on the planet outside of a 100 metre final, but just how will Tom measure up? Make sure when you get to that last gate you do not slow down, you just run straight through it. Three, two, one, let's go. Push, 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 We're testing Tom over short, explosive distances, clocking not only his 5 and 20 metre splits, but also his ground contact time. Because in sevens, speed is everything. Look at this run coming from Roscoe Spickman. Well, here goes Ayers. Look at that. Well, he's not going to be caught now, is he? Despite breaking his left ankle a year ago, it's not holding Tom back. Time for the analysis. The five meter sprint time, the best time was 1.15. Not so, bad, yeah. so not too bad at all. Well, Tom's speed is certainly one of his major assets, and although his 20-meter time of 3.08 seconds is below the quick men of the 15-a-side game, his ground contact results are the headline grabber, only three one-hundredths of a second outside a world-class sprinter. When we analyze the, the contact time, what that's telling us is power. It, it's about Tom's ability to strike the ground and accelerate off the ground because invariably in rugby sevens it is about acceleration from either zero velocity in other words standstill or very low velocity to very very high speed as quickly as possible my main strength on the field is is my ability to use my feet and my agility uh, to beat defenders and to create space tied in with that is my acceleration the ability to move quickly across the ground and, and change direction quickly is something that i use in the game all the time I played a whole load of sports when I was younger. I was mad into football, played cricket at school as well, I loved playing basketball, tennis. Fortunately, my dad was into his rugby, he took me up to the local rugby club when I was eight, and I'm pretty glad he did, because I've loved the sport. Compared to some of the other guys, I'm fortunate in our squad, we've got a huge number of athletes. Some guys that are big and, and push a lot of weight in the gym and, and have a lot of power. Um, other guys are incredibly quick, so I'm kind of in the middle somewhere and kind of try to have a bit of everything, and I guess perhaps that's my strength. If there was another sport that I could play, it'd be basketball. I'd love to play in the NBA. So I watched some of those guys, like LeBron James, the athleticism and the skill and the speed that they play with. I'd love to have been able to emulate that, but I'm uh, a few inches too short for that game, I think. Performance is not just about the body. It's about the interaction between the body and the brain. Effectively, the brain is the central controller. It's telling us what to do. So for Tom, he's having to make decisions at incredibly high speeds in very, very pressurized environments. Very difficult thing to do. Cognitive ability is vital to maximizing the body's physical function. But it's not just about relaying instructions. In a game situation, Tom has to absorb, process, and interpret huge amounts of data fast. OK, Tom, we're going to do a series of tests, and these are going to look at your brain function. By testing Tom's pattern recognition skills, we can evaluate both his spatial awareness as well as his ability to make the right decisions quickly. Rugby Sevens has been called human chess, a game of the brain as much as the body. Reaction time is critical for any player, but especially a team captain. Can Tom make the correct calls quickly when it really counts? How'd you find that? 
Yeah, it was. Uh, it does mess with your mind a bit. Your average reaction time is quicker than Jensen Button's one, which is. I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, take I'll that. take that. Yeah. <laughs> These results for Tom are absolutely outstanding, particularly around response time. And in fact, what we see is a better response time than we expect from Formula One drivers. So it really tells you how important this area is for Tom, but probably tells you something about Tom. What really makes him elite is the ability to make those split second decisions, which is what makes him one of the best try scorers in the world. The counter movement jump test and the drop jump test are really markers of power. Because we're looking at height jump, they're also a measure of power to weight ratio. In other words, what you are trying to be is as light as possible, but as powerful as possible. The force test will focus on Tom's calves, quads, adductors, and glutes, measuring how quickly he can move from muscle extension to contraction to achieve maximal force in the shortest possible time. Maximal effort, keeping your hands on hips as high as you possibly can, and then land and hold that position. Three, two, one, maximum effort here. Good stuff, and jump. Good stuff, well done, excellent. Whether it's competing for possession or breaking through the toughest of defenses, the modern sevens player needs the ability to unleash maximum power instantaneously to make those big match-saving tackles, as well as try-scoring runs. Two, one, and we're up. Good, and go. Good stuff, well done, and relax. Contact times are really, really good. Again, comparable to some Olympic athletes we've had in. A drop jump contact time of 0.21 seconds combined with a flight time of almost half a second are in the same zone as an Olympic high jumper and Tom's not even at full fitness. Because we know Tom is carrying an injury. I think the interesting thing for me is that we can compartmentalize this into two areas. One is the sort of psychology and the other is the physiology and the performance. From a psychology perspective, it shows you what Tom is all about. He is the captain of Team GB. He is a leader. He is tenacious, he is driven, and I think that really tells you everything you need to know, that despite the injury, he undertook the test. The constant battle that we face as rugby players is robustness, the ability to train day in, day out, and maintain a healthy body throughout a tournament. In its Olympic debut, Rugby Sevens proved to be one of the most exciting and explosive sports in Rio. To excel at the highest level, it needs the complete athlete, and Tom's speed, strength, and mental firepower set him apart, even among the elite, showing just what's behind the anatomy of an Olympic medal winner. I mean, Tom is an incredible specimen. You only need to take a look at him to see that. He is an elite athlete. He has strength, he has power, he has speed, he has agility. Is he gonna go the distance? Oh! The standout thing is actually his ability to operate under pressure, to make decisions, and that will be the difference between winning and losing. The thing is about being a professional athlete, it's not just your nine to five, you know, there's not really a clocking off time. So you go home, you think about what you're eating, you're thinking about how much sleep you need that night. That can be a tough thing to adjust to at the beginning, but once you're into it and, and you realise why you're making those sacrifices, then it just becomes part of your life.